into the day with the dawn ringing in my ears. Oh, well, I turn to my TV show. No better way, I gotta get myself into gear. Let's go. Oh, and I. Good morning, you beautiful early risers. Welcome to it. Your Feel Good Breakfast Show is live, large and in charge. It's a Thursday morning. My name is Katle Khamabowe. Mm, hi, my name is Graham Richards. Great to see you, buddy. Great likewise, to see likewise. Sir. you at home. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's going to be an awesome show. Before we, we delve into what's going to be a really awesome lineup, we've got to say, um, obviously, after the passing of Jeff Bezos yeah. yesterday, a massive condolence to his family, to the political structures within the country. I now have a full understanding of what he meant to so many people yeah. Yeah. Um, and really is working himself into the DNA of South Africa. So we send our condolences to the entire country today on, on what is certainly a day of mourning. Absolutely. I think the, the past few years have kind of felt like coming to an end of an era when you think of all of the great stalwarts that have left us uh, very unfortunately so. But uh, so much more the reason to remember what they their purpose was uh, while they were around and for us to celebrate oh, them, especially ever. during this Heritage Month. Also, listen, uh, Grant Hines is here, of course, our gaming guy. It's always fun when he's around and he's here to share his review on uh, the latest Tony Hawk game and uh, he's even brought along a signed Tony Hawk skateboard. What? Get out. You Get can out stand out a chance of winning that. Absolutely. What? That's yeah. like priceless. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually a priceless piece of memorabilia. So you want to stick around for that. And then we're going to chat to the highest ranked skateboarder in Africa. It's 22-year-old Brandon Valjalo about the game itself. We'll get an insider's perspective. Absolutely. And also join us as we go live on our Facebook page at 8 or 8, 10. 10 minutes past 8, exactly. And we kick off Expresso's Fortnite tournament. It's going to be absolutely epic. Well, let's get the day started. Say hello to the rest of the team. Good morning. Uh, good, good morning. morning. Beautiful soul's an epic morning. It is indeed. My name is Raul. Good morning. And this beautiful soul on my right hand side. Kamalam <laughs> Gugusha Adams. Thank you so much for choosing to start off your clean Freedag with yeah. us right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. You know what else I'm excited for today? Something's cooking in the kitchen. Oh, something is cooking in the kitchen. Yep. Today we Zanzi's are making favorite. burgers. Zanzi's burgers, favorite. yeah, we've got some burgers. We've got some fit cook as well, I believe. Mm. Also doing some filling. So we're asking you all at home, what is your favorite filling when it comes to putting something good in those buns? And we're asking you on social media this morning to let us know what your favorite fit cook filling is. And of course, we're going to deliver you with the goods on mm. how to make Zanzi's favorite. What is I your favorite wait filling? I for that. Oh, ikwinya. Ikwinya does itself with butter for me and coffee does the job. However, mints, mm. definitely, mm. poloni, mm. irasheni, yeah. anything, anything mm. meaty, lamb, mutton, everything. How about you, right? You know, I love just taking like three-day-old like babuti oh. or curry and just mm, warm it Stuffing up, it in. bang, oh, mm, nothing better. Delicious. <laughs> I cannot wait for all of that action. Make sure to keep it locked right here on your Feel Good Break for sure. But we're going to keep it moving right now with those oh-so-important news headlines. Here's Kat. Well, it's just gone three minutes past the hour. Here's a first look at the news headlines on this Thursday morning. On the national news front, President Cyril Ramaphosa has sent his condolences to the family and friends of the late renowned human rights lawyer, George Bezos, uh, who passed away uh, yesterday at the age of 92 after a period of poor health. Now, Bezos was part of the legal teams of the treason and Rivonia trials in 1956 and 1964, respectively, defending the rights of activists against apartheid, including Nelson Mandela, Oliver Tambo and Walter Sisulu. Bezos was also one of the architects of the constitution and played a critical role in the country's transition from apartheid to democracy. In other news, the Tourism Business Council has South, or of South Africa has made an impassioned plea to the government to immediately open the country's borders if the sector is to be revived. Now, tourism is one of the most affected sectors by the coronavirus pandemic, which has also led to South Africa's 51% annualized decrease in gross domestic product during the second quarter of 2020. Tourism has seen massive job losses and the closure of many businesses. The council's CEO, Chifiwa Chibeng Chibengwa, requested the government for time frames as COVID-19 infections are decreasing.
On the international news front, Zimbabwe has banned mining in all its national parks with immediate effect, reversing a decision to let Chinese firms explore for local for coal rather in its famous Hangwe Game Park. Steps are also being undertaken to immediately cancel all mining titles held in the national parks. The move came after campaigners took the government to court to prevent ecological degra uh, degradation in parks. Hwange, uh, Zimbabwe's largest national park, is home to more than 40,000 elephants and numerous other species, including the endangered black rhino. Now, scientists of the Harry Perkins Institute of Medical Research in Western Australia say the venom from honeybees has been found to destroy aggressive breast cancer cells in a lab setting. The venom and a compound in it called melatonin was used against two types of cancer which are hard to treat. The discovery has been described as, quote, exciting, but scientists caution that further testing is needed. Bee venom has previously been found to have anti-cancer properties for other types of cancer such as melanoma. And our next encouraging news of an animal last seen more than 100 years ago. To great excitement of many, a family of wolverines has been spotted in Mount Rainier National Park of the state of Washington in the United States for the first time in more than a century. Now, they were discovered by scientists of the Cascades Carnival Project. It is estimated that only 300 to 1,000 of them inhabit the United States. The wolverines were spotted at the park through camera stations installed in 2018. The mother wolverine named Joni by the Cascades Carnival Project was identified as a nursing female. A video of three wolverines in a snowfield and then seconds later dashing through a meadow into a forest has gone viral. A park ecologist said wolverines are solitary animals and despite their reputation for aggressiveness in popular media, they pose no risk to visitors. Wolverines are tough and powerful animals that resemble a small bear but are actually the largest member of the weasel family. Now they are reported to need lots of space in which to roam and may travel up to 24 kilometers a day in search of food. Now may this wolverine family flourish in the Mount Rainier Park. And on that note, let's take a look at the sports headlines. Here comes Graham. Thanks so much, Kat. Well, speaking of going out into the wild, or at least being left there, Kaiser Chiefs have parted ways with head coach to Ertz Middendorp just a few days after they failed to win the 2019-2020 PSL season, despite leading the table going into the final day's play. Chiefs chairman Kaiser Motong and the club's management made the decision yesterday. The 61-year-old Middendorp has been with the club since December of 2018. On Saturday, Chiefs, of course, were held to a one-all draw against Baraka FC. That resulted in Mamelodi Sundowns winning the league for the third consecutive season after their 3-0 win over Black Leopards. On to international rugby news, four South African rugby players have been included in the Pro 14 Dream Team for the 2019-2020 season. Cheetahs hooker Joseph Dweber made the cut as the only player from a South African side, but fellow South Africans Jaco van der Walt, Duan van der Merwe and Pia Skuman, all from the Pro 14 Team Edinburgh, have also been included in that Dream Team. Then on to tennis currently unfolding and providing a lot of drama. The 23-year-time Grand Slam winner Serena Williams has booked her place in the US Open semi-finals. She looks on course after seeing off Bulgarian Svetlana Pironkova 4-6-6-3-6-2 last night. Williams is a six-time US Open champion and is chasing now a record equaling 24th Grand Slam title. That while fourth seed Naomi Saka also secured her semi-final berth after beating American Shelby Rogers in straight sets 6-3-6-4. The 22-year-old uh, Japanese star will now face fellow American now uh, other American star 28th seed Jennifer Brady in the semi-finals. And on to the men's uh, title race of course now wide open with the exit of Novak Djokovic. German tennis player Alexander Zverev reached his first Europe, uh, US Open semi-final. That was after beating off Croatian Borna Koric. So Zverev fought back from a set down to beat the 27 seed 1-6-7-6-7-6-6-3. The 23-year-old now face Spanish 20th seed Pablo Carreno Busta in the semi-finals. That was after he beat Canadian 12th seed Denis Shapovalov 3-6-7-6-7-6-love-6-6-3 in a titanic clash that lasted more than four hours. We'll touch on those stories again in an hour or so. Right now, let's see what the weather has in store.
Let's start off with your sunrise pictures. And Dokos Makatini shared this image of a fiery golden disc making way for a brand new day in Johannesburg. You start off the morning with a low of 9 degrees and will reach a warmer temperatures in the afternoon with a maximum of 27 degrees. Nancy Governor never misses the opportunity to capture the most immaculate sunrises in Umgomaz. Do expect a cloudy day today with a low of 15 and a high of 22 degrees. Thank you so much for all your stunning sunrise pictures. I hope that you continue sharing them on our social media platforms and I trust that you will have a fantastic Thursday morning. Let's move further afield with International Weather Report. Plumes of smoke from wildfires in the U.S. state of California descended on the San Francisco area yesterday, causing the sky over the region to turn orange. Strong winds pushed smoke and ash from some of these blazes to northern parts of the state. Residents of San Francisco and surrounding areas woke up to darkened skies. It still appeared to be dawn at 10.45 as the sun's rays struggled to penetrate the thick smoke. Some 14,000 firefighters are battling 28 major blazes across California amid a historic heat wave. Wildfires have until now devastated more than 2.5 million acres in the state this year. Here's what the weather has in store in your part of the country. Sunny skies are expected across South Africa with isolated showers in the Eastern Cape. Skyle Polokwane, 725. Mombela is a partly cloudy day with a minimum temperature of 13, but will reach an afternoon temperature of 25 degrees. A sunny day in Pretoria with a maximum of 29 degrees. Josie Maboneng, 927 are your temperatures for this Glen Fredag. A sunny one for Mahikeng as well at a high of 30 degrees. Klekstorp, we start off the morning with a low of 11, but will reach a high of 30 degrees. Kimberly in the Big Hold Big Hold 1231 Bloomfield Dane 829 Richards Bay your maximum for the day is 25 degrees. Do expect 49% uh, chance of rain. Peter Marinsburg partly cloudy 1224. Durban South Africa's playground your low is 17 and will reach a high of 24 degrees. I'm tired it's going to be a rainy day with a low of 11 but will reach the high teens of 19 degrees. Expect 40% chance of rain. Yanet Taimonti Namhlanje 1429 um, 1419 rather with 56% chance of rain. Cradock, 722. Rainy day in Port Elizabeth, 79% chance of rain, 1418. Showers for George, 90% chance of rain at a low of 13 with a high of 16. A windy morning for Cape Town at 31.5 kilometers an hour with a morning start of 12 degrees with an afternoon temperature of 20. Expect a dreary cloudy day in Vusta, 1021. A Sutherland, uh, 923. And lastly, definitely not least, Uppington, your start of the day is 15 degrees and will reach a high of 34 degrees. Now remember, whichever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of day. Yeah, especially if you live in Kimberley. In the <laughs> uh, <you're laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Kuzi, for making the weather uh, super entertaining this morning. <laughs> now, listen, uh, we know that it's absolutely important to share the smooth together. Now, uh, while we're practicing social distancing, of course, yes, right? that's yes, very, yes. very important. <laughs> it's not smooth to give a handshake, but it's very smooth to do an elbow bump. <laughs> now that's right. Now we have five ways to stay smooth while social distancing this <laughs> summer. And of course, the first way is obviously to stay connected with your friends from afar with a video or WhatsApp call on your smartphone. Now that's a smooth way to show you care. Absolutely. <laughs> How about having a silent disco okay. with wireless headphones in your backyard? It's a great and fun way. And uh, it, it, it's a great way to also, also get in some exercise. Yeah, Can you definitely. imagine the interest that you might pique from your neighbors if they see you it's with your wife? In the like, garden. <laughs> and you're like, I wonder what song he's jamming to. <laughs> well, look, another awesome idea is to have a pool or beach party with your family and wear your most fashionable sunglasses and swimwear and make an absolute day out of it. And why not just gram the entire day while you're at it? <laughs> I like that idea too. Yeah, yeah, man, pretend, content you're some, is king. pretend you're on some exotic island somewhere just having the smoothest life. Yeah, I like that. that. <laughs> also, hey, get outdoors for a hike or explore Mzanti's beautiful landscape. Yes. Uh, make sure to go with a group, of course, and keep track of time to not go hiking into the mountains when it's too dark. You want to yeah. keep safe as well. But yeah, there are some beautiful places to explore all around the country. Great for your fitness and just especially after being under lockdown for so long. Oh, yeah. Just 
open your lungs, you know all about it's it. It's like this weird sense of freedom, exactly. of course. And now the most favorite part for me is obviously chilling some refreshing tropicas in a bar fridge. So it's ready for a refreshing drink or make yourself and your friends a summer mocktail and just go straight into the vibe and get that Cosmo look going on, yeah. Looking good there, tasting good, cat. Oh, that is good. That is good. <laughs> Looking like you're sitting deep in summer over there. I was for a second. That's what every sip is. <laughs> now those are some smooth ideas. So, uh, do you get the hint of what what something smooth applies to, right? And uh, of course, there's uh, uh, smooth appliances and accessories that are coming through as well that are available for you to yeah, get I can, your hands. I definitely do, my man, and I cannot wait now because there will be up for grabs with this Tropica Smooth, not smooth competition. So keep a lookout for the new smooth, not smooth, Tropica promotional packs in store where you can enter and find out more details on how to stand a chance to win. Mm. Cheers, my brother. Cheers, brother. <laughs> you got to say smoother. Smoother. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm chatting to Omalume Mosa here. He's owned a small clothing factory for years now, and he's always inspired me with his success. But like a lot of businesses, this lockdown's hit him hard. So he spoke to his banker, and they've put together a tailor-made relief solution for him to help his business and his people get through this. Making your bank your business partner? That's a habit worth keeping. Have your story of hope published by Cadbury Dairy Milk. Now, there's a story in everyone, so whether real or imagined, share yours and it could be amongst the 20 most inspiring stories compiled into an e-book that brings hope, light and wonder to orphaned and vulnerable children across the land. Add 87 240 to your WhatsApp contacts, follow the prompts and share your story as a Word document, a PDF or a video recording. Standard data rates apply. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express on SABC3. Happy Thursday and thanks for joining us at the start of a brand new day. That's now this morning uh, for our latest gaming action. We've got Grant Hines who, who joins us. Look at me. Oh my word. Woo! Yes. We are lead. How we do? That's how we do. That's amazing. That's how we do. That's amazing. That's the excitement of the morning because we're talking about the all new Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Uh, is it one and two? It's one and two. It's a remake. A remake. Of the two, in my opinion, best Tony Hawks ever made. And this is for the PlayStation 4 and for the Xbox One. It's for PlayStation well. 4 and the Xbox One. And it's literally, it combines uh, those two games. They've remastered it, remade it in, in many ways. It's not exactly the same game. Yes, yes, But yes, that, yes. that's what's good about it. If you've ever played Tony Hawk back in the day, if you've played all of them up to number four, they included new mechanics all the way through. You know, it was kind of like the first version and then all the way to the fourth version, they improved Tony Hawk as a game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took all those improvements and then plugged them all the way back up to Tony Hawk 1. Unbelievable. Which is great so that you can do reverts to make sure that you get all your multipliers in. You know, there's a lot of nostalgia for I me. I was about to say, before we even get into like what the improvements of it, I mean, this is a game that has a 20 year long heritage. It's it comes from way, way back. Um, so for those that don't know much about Tony Hawk Pro Skater as a game, give us the sense of why it's so revered by gamers out there, why it's so prolific, why it's so loved. Okay, so like those of you who remember Tony Hawk, 
will be old, like me, <laughs> um, or like know that your parents had played it at some stage. Yeah. Um, my, like what, what made it so good was that it was just so responsive. It was like a really trick centric. I remember being at school and people would play the game and then they would have all these rumors about what this, their high school was. Yeah. Like yeah, at yeah, school, yeah. you'd be like, yo, my friend David, he's my cousin, he's got like eight million on Marseille's. And I'd be like, what? And then my brother and I would go home and we'd be like, we got to get that high score as well. <laughs> and now with the, the internet, because remember, we didn't really have internet like that prolific. We didn't yeah, play yeah, games yeah. online. We had to see those scores in magazines and stuff. That's true. Now it's online and kids can play against one each other on the internet. Yeah. They can compete. There's a multiplayer mode. You can play in the same uh, map and try beat each other's high scores as you go along, which is super fun. And it's just like they've literally made like a potty pack of everything that was amazing about Tony Hawk yeah. and did it extremely well. Yeah, man. It really is. Tony Hawk 5 was absolute trash. It was such a bad game. <laughs> and then this came out, I'm like, I want more Tony Hawk. They and really I mean, need to do it. Let's not forget that the game itself was named after the legend that is Tony Hawk. Like, it, like what does he represent in the world of skateboarding? Like, he's like the godfather he, of he, like, he was the first person to do the 900, like rotate 900 degrees. That's how many, you could work out how many. That's the, like, that's a lot three of. Three and a half. No, 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 it's less than that, because 360 is one. It's, so. wait, it's, it's eight? It's it eight spins? No, that's no, not. No, because one whole spin is 360. 360 is my math is bad. Like two and a half. I'm just too excited. Two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Wow, that, that's, that's a lot. Can you imagine how much air that's hang, hang time you must have? So, so for skateboarders, for the community, this is a game that like represents their culture, their style, what they're all about. And of course then, you know, for, for new adopters as well, for guys who are picking up the game right now, it's, it's something that's pretty easy to get into because it's fun. It's free play, you're skating around. It's very like arcade Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not like skate, which was a little bit more like technical. This is the arcade version of that. And it, it's, it's really a legacy of video games. It's one of my favorite video game series of all time. Yeah. I had the best time with my brother, playing with, uh, with my family and playing with like friends at school, just passing the controller around. Yeah, like a lot of those games are usually like FIFA's where your friends come around and play. Yes. Tony Hawk's back and you can play split screen with your friend on the couch. You can play online. It's just, it's, it's back to that. Like, you know, it's, yo, man, so, I'm um, so excited. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I was gonna, so what's your, your, your overall verdict? I mean, uh, you think that people are gonna love it? You think that the-, the People are going to done, love it. It yeah. is done, it is, it, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Like, they could not have made a better love letter to Tony Hawk. They could not have made it better in many ways. As, 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 look, the soundtrack is there even. They've added a whole bunch of new songs. There's a whole new generation of music, which I'm being introduced to in those yeah, yeah. genres, which, you know, I used to listen to in high school. I'm going, like, wow, MXPX are still making music? Like, oh, wow, dude. you know, like, it's really, really cool. Listen, I want you to give us a little bit of gameplay. I think we have a camera set up for that right now, so you can check out that screen. And I'll tell you uh, very, very quickly what is very exciting while Grant gives us a bit of breakdown of gameplay. Now, of course, uh, a trusted review from our trusted gamer, uh, but this might even inspire the 90 skaters out there to pick up their boards and go for a skate again. Maybe even pick up a new console and try out this new game. Now, we're also giving away one Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 Collector's Edition hamper to a lucky viewer. The prize contains one PS4 Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 full game, Digital Deluxe Edition content, limited edition full-size birdhouse skateboard deck, and then of course you can visit our Facebook uh, uh, page as well and see the post and let us know um, what's the 90s nostalgia? What does it do uh, to bring you kind of like back to the 90s in terms of gaming? What does it bring back for you in memory? You can check out the question over there. T's and C's can be found on our Expresso Show website, expressoshow.com. And that also, skateboard yes? is signed by Tony Hawk. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> that, that, that's really big. The skateboard that you can win it's is signed, signed by Tony Hawk. By Tony Hawk himself. Get excited, get amped. That is super, super amazing. Uh, the game will keep you busy for the longest time and looks absolutely fantastic as well. G-Man, always exciting to have you on the show to talk about all oh, of these things. I'm, you know, uh, I want to give it a, can I give it a try? Of course you can. Yeah? Okay, cool. I'm going to skate. Wait, so, okay, you can, you can do the I'm, I'm Oh, look at that. I just, I just did something on the board. Look at that. Get in there. Can I ollie? Yeah, like, go, is, go, this, go. is this something I can go. do? Kick for, oh. Whoa! 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 Yes! <laughs> I've done everything I want to do on TV. <laughs> I retire.
<laughs> oh, well, the guys are having way too much fun here in the studio. What is Justin with you, of course? I played that game quickly when mm. I was a kid. I really? believed I was going to go pro. I was railing for like hours on that game. It was what so much fun. What distracted you? What took you off your groove, bro? I don't know this damn thing they call life. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, this might even inspire the 90s skaters to pick up their boards and go for a skate again. But in the meantime, it's uh, time to chat to our inspired 22-year-old Brandon Faljalo. And now he is the highest ranked skateboarder in Africa. Wow. He's out here to try some tricks for himself, so check this out. Ooh. <laughs> What's up guys, this is Brandon Valjalo. I just got me the new Tony Hawk Pro Skater. So today we're gonna go on inside and try it out. Really hard to open this up and see what's inside. So over here we got the new Tony Hawk game as well as a signed Tony Hawk Birdhouse Pro Model Board. Super excited about this, super rad. Let's go check out the game. I'm gonna try to do the tricks in the game and replicate them in real life in my backyard skate park. Here we go. Oh, let's hope I don't do that in real life. I'm trying to make them a little bit realistic for me to be able to do outside, but I'm thinking of doing a front side indie grab, a front side flip, a front side board slide, a backside crooked grind. Crook. Oh, and an impossible. All right, it's time to put these tricks down in real life. All right, so first off, I'm going to try the front side kick flip. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the back foot impossible. Oh! There we go. Maybe better in the game. I'm gonna do the front side board slide. Ah! Hopefully get it faster than I did in the game. Front side Indy. Blasted it, almost as high, but I doubt it. Basically, I'm gonna do the backside crooked grind. Oh! You know, we had a good time skating. Had fun. I thought I had to put more effort in playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater. The game got me on T. I think maybe I need to put more effort in actually skateboarding. Oh man. That oh, was wow. awesome, okay? Oh. That was cool. <laughs> also, I just got reminded of why I stopped skateboarding. Did you why? see the hits he was taking? <laughs> I can't believe that people do those moves in real life. Well, Brandon joins us via video call right now. What's up, dude? What's up, bro? <laughs> How's it, guys? How are you doing? Oh, We're so all good, good so man. Good. Really excited to have you here on Bra the show. I've got to ask, that skate park, is that in your backyard? Yeah, so no it's in my way. backyard, literally <laughs> two seconds down the driveway, and then I'm on my skate park. So, uh, yeah, you... that's pretty much where I skate every single day. <laughs> every kid has just been like, Mom? I want to be like Brandon. We <laughs> Give need me a skate park right now <laughs> in the backyard. You are ranked number one in South Africa and in Africa. How did you even get started with skateboarding? Um, so I started when I was around three years old. It was because my dad and my older brother used to skate back in the day. So um, it was always in the garage. It was always a thing that we did in our family. It was more of a hobby in the beginning. <laughs> and then it became like, a little bit of a bigger thing for me because I, I used to watch Life of Ryan on TV with my mom and I was like, mom, I want to be a professional skateboarder. And she was like, okay, cool. Well, I'll be your manager one day, just like Ryan Sheckler's mom is his manager. And she was like, <laughs> she was like okay, mom, that's our plan for the future. Let's do it. And today we made it a reality. It's oh. actually pretty crazy to me. No ways. What an absolute legend. Your mom's also a legend too, so shout out to her, man, Brandon. But listen, yeah, shout out to the mom and <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Now listen, I'll fast forward all these years from the age of three when you're supposed to be learning how to walk. We come through to 2020 where it's supposed to be one of the biggest years for mm. you now with the introduction of skateboarding at the Tokyo Olympics. Of course, I know you were frothing, but lockdown happened. Mm. So, man, i got to ask, how did this affect you and obviously your preparation for next year when you appear on that global stage? What's going to happen and, and, and what does this all entail for you? So, I feel like the whole lockdown situation and the postponements of the Olympic Games has definitely been more of a benefit for me because I've had the skate park in my backyard. I've been <laughs> able to train every single day. Mm. I've been able to get more ready and more prepared for 2021. And I feel like with more preparation, I'll be ready to, to try to bring back that gold medal. 
Oh. Don't ever give up the hope. Don't ever give up the dream. Go out there and fly the South African flag high. But tell us about the work that goes behind, you know, qualifying for the Olympics. Um, so pretty much there was a whole Olympic competition circuit that I would travel all around the world to go compete in. And it was very, 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 very competitive with all of the best skateboarders from around the world. And we all came together and we competing in the street skateboarding circuit. So I feel like the traveling and it definitely takes a toll on your body because it's different environments, different food that you're eating. You're not really in a routine that you can train and be like comfortable. And at the end of the day, it definitely takes a strain on your body with the whole impact that skateboarding has. So you have to make sure you manage stretching, taking care of your body, staying fit, eating healthily. And it's that's pretty much the behind the scenes. And then it's all the practice that you've been practicing and you just got to put it to work and make sure that you make it count when it really matters. Oh, so cool, yeah, man. Like an absolute pro as well, man. Brandon, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting to the studio, man, and wishing you so, so much luck and all the best for next year, brother. Thank you. Cool. Thank you guys so much for having me. <laughs> oh, man, that is SA's skateboarding wonder kid and an Olympic hopeful, Brandon Faljalo. What a legend, man. Thank you so much. And I'm sure it's inspired a lot of you at home. So don't give up on your dreams. Keep pushing, keep chasing. <laughs> it's happening right now. <laughs> Cadbury Dairy Milk Glass and a Half Project presents There's a Story in Everyone. Visit cadbury.co.za forward slash story time for more information on how to share your inspirational story. You only have one skin. Nourish it and wear it bravely. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show, Expresso. It's so good to be in your company at the start of a brand new day. And of course, spring is in the air and we are certainly loving the outdoors, reconnecting with the ocean and nature, which makes having an uncomplicated and easy to wear wardrobe even more important. And so our resident fashion and beauty editor, Nox Mafu, is here to give us the rundown on the must-have basics of this season. And uh, this is very exciting. It is. Uh, yes. Because you, you told me earlier on <laughs> that the gents are winning. The gents are winning. I have been, I'm very familiar with yes. the Woolworths range. And right now, the men's fashion is absolutely incredible. Such great looks. You guys are winning. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. But in general, what yes. can we expect to see in menswear this season? Yeah. So I think we're returning to the earthy tones. I think we're seeing a lot of more cooler tones, um, the more kind of relaxed fit, things that are very easy to get into. And and really a return to the heritage pieces. So mm -hmm. we're looking at chinos, we're looking at the golfer. Really cool, easy to wear things, but in earthy tones and very kind of a cooling effect. Yes. Um, which is really, really nice and quite easy to slip into anyone's kind of style and wardrobe. Yeah, I look at the rail behind me. Yes. Nice little collection that yes. you brought with you. Take us through some of these must-have basics for the season. So, you know, like I said, ret returning to kind of your earthier pieces. So let's just give a, a look at this amazing, sustainably sourced cotton golfer. Mm -hmm. a really relaxed fit with kind of a nice play between colors there. The material already feels so much better. Mm -hmm. And of course that is because it, it is ethically sourced. And then a shocker to most of us is the return of corduroy. What? And I love this kind of fit. With a little drawstring. With a drawstring, very relaxed, but a very slim fit tailored um, kind of effect. And one might think that you're only able to wear this in winter, but it's actually got a very cool summer's day yeah. kind of look to it. So like a late lunch with the boys and you're looking very stylish. And I've also uh, actually never seen corduroy in white before. 
if I think we about it. It's, it's always things. like in the browns and exactly. the burgundies and dark greens. Which I like this kind of refreshing look to it, you know. The easy breezy shirt, which is also just nice, you know. Ah, just beautiful. Too. Great feel, yes. um, a really lovely way to kind of step up any outfit. Mm -hmm. So I really think, you know, these are great basics to have that will just change any outfit. And of course, the very quick and easy um, summer short, mm -hmm. drawstring detail over there. I love the pocket design over there. Um, but a really, really lovely element. And these pieces just fit so easily and are a great staple for anything. The yeah. stripes seem to be also a big kind of popular thing um, in the Woolworths range at the moment, but a great essential. Yeah. I think I think at the end of the day, when it comes to summer spring styling, you want to look at a person, you go, wow, that is so stylish, but it's so it's so easy. It's so easy. It's and so it, easy. Yes, it's that effortless look. I think I'm always, like you say, drawn to someone where I'm like, that didn't look like a lot of effort, but because it's tailored so well, yes. it fits to the body. It really kind of follows the form. You look great. And it's actually so effortless. Let's look at our model, shall we? We've Let's got do to, it. We've imported a model <laughs> from overseas. From overseas, uh, we opened the borders. Stunning. Yeah, we've opened the borders. We've opened the borders for the style icon over here. <laughs> Talk to us about the elements of basic ease, but kind of super stylish that have been put together here. So Tabisa looks great in here. Let's start from the top. There's a brilliant striped top, which really, really feels amazing. I think the fit on his form feels really, really good. And we've tucked that in with a drawstring kind of tailor. Um, pant and I love 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 these pants they fit so well on him you can get them in navy so you know they're very interchangeable if you were to get two of the same thing I genuinely wouldn't blame you because it looks so <laughs> good but what I also like about this look is that it's super relaxed but if he wants to take it up a notch he can wear a blazer and it really changes the tone of it all so a very relaxed kind of styling with yeah. the shoe but then I mean he could make it more serious if he wanted to wear a formal shoe so the versatility of this outfit yeah. is what stands out to me and Tabi so I must say that uh, we have been seeing quite a lot of your ankles of late. Very impressive ankles indeed. Thank you for that. Uh, but so. tell me more about your style. When you put this on this morning, what, what, what are your thoughts when it comes to a seasonal styling, spring style? This really spoke to me. I think Knox is right to say that it's effortless, but at the same time, there's a, there's a consistency in the tapering of the pants that's coming through. Mm. Uh, step so back a little bit so we can get uh, that What nice Willie's have shot. been able to do is make sure that they make it look like these pants are tailored specifically for me, and that comes through in the tapering detail. Mm -hmm. and you struggle to find that especially with those easy laid back type of pants yeah. often they can be quite whoopsy at the mm. bottom this is really mm. cool quite what whoopsy like whoopsy? when i whoops like Nala. whoops <laughs> Boop. you know is that the sound that the pants make or the it, it, if they could make a sound it, that would be the sound whoopsy uh, okay whoops like, oh, whoops. So no whoops. Uh, so it doesn't time. have that. But the really nice thing about this is really, as you will see throughout the show, because this is the outfit I'm going to be wearing on the show, mm. I'm going to throw on a jacket and it instantly changes the feel and the mood of yeah, the outfit. Absolutely. And so it lends itself to that versatility. It means you can take it from a laid back lunch on a Saturday out yes. uh, you know, at the waterfront and head into a meeting, a Zoom meeting and still look amazing or head into uh, an event or a mm. dinner uh, event uh, or dinner uh, party and still look amazing in it. I think it's really, really awesome. And I'm in love with it so much so that I asked Knox if I could keep this look I'm modeling in for the rest of the show. It's really oh, right. Yeah. And did she agree? Yes. I did. Fantastic. I did. You look I mean, great he looks in great. it. Yeah. Why you. would I stop e goodness? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Why would I stop e goodness? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Knox, thanks very much. Tubbs, you look absolutely thanks. amazing. Thanks. From sustainably sourced cotton tees and golfers to breezy shirts and summer ready shorts, of course, you can shop it all at Woolies. And you can do this in store, online, or also on the app. I was just making sure it <laughs> is the way that the stove is on, unattended. Oh, Are you fine eyeing it? I, I, I know what's going on there. Oh, it's happening. Okay. It's because there. we don't want it to make that sound whoops. Whoops. Like Tamiso's pants. I know. Whoops. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But you look absolutely stunning, Uncle Tabsy. But right now, though, before we get into cooking, we are asking you to do a good thing and help someone who is in need. Woolies has teamed up with Gift of the Givers with an aim of distributing one million meals to families who are in need. Each food care package is filled with a balance of protein, fresh fruit, vegetables, and other staples as well as hygiene products to help curb the spread of COVID-19. Now, if only 4,700 South Africans each donate 10 rand card, just 10 rand, we will reach that incredible goal. How can you get involved, you may ask? Just scan the QR code on the screen using the Snap Scan app or your banking app and donate what you can towards filling a bag. Remember to encourage your friends, your families, your neighbors, colleagues, and chat groups to do the same. Every little bit will definitely make a difference.
But right now I have a big smile on my face because we're going to be making something that's really juicy and delicious. There's absolutely nothing like a homemade burger, especially if it is served up with Chef Clem's spicy jalapeno slaw. Mm. Nah? Mm. This burger is going to knock your socks off because it is that good. I love me a stacked up burger, Chef Clem. So that's about right. 100% on okay. point. Okay. Woolies have come through 100% on point to the eating <laughs> meal. So you can either get the eight burger patties, mm. these are the beef ones, or you can get the chicken, or you can get the beach smoked up hot dog sausages. You can kind of pick mm. which one you want. You can eat, then you get the, the buns, you gotta get them buns, all the hot dog buns, and you can get the sweet potato chips over there, and those are so good, oh, so good. Wow. And then they even like, literally, they understand. You know, it doesn't matter how full you are at the end of a meal, something sweet. 100%. And you know what, they came through with an icon. <laughs> An icon, the chocolate mousse. The girl herself, like chocolate uh, mousse. There's, there's like, Willie fascinates me in the fact that they've got like a cult following in a sense, like people are walking, that's the only, like they got these iconic products. Mm. One of them is the chocolate mousse, tin roof ice cream, okay. Staple. What, okay, they, they, they ribs, Delish. okay. The truffle mayo, mm. okay. And then the scarf, yeah. All right, but be, be, before, like we about, before, be, before we talk about this, okay, so when you buy this deal, right, the eating deal, you'll be saving up to 40 bucks. When I came in this morning, Nicole was like, she shopped so many deals yesterday, mm. she saved so much money. I was like, this is, this is like insane, this is crazy. I love it when they have our bags financially, hey? Yeah. Because we're all <laughs> trying to be very so, aware exactly. how we spend. So Nicole knows the rule, whatever we say that the till at Woolies, it goes into Filling a bag. Yes. So we've, we've actually did like quite a big, a lot of filling this mm. week. Okay, so let's talk about this guy. Please. So this is not part of the deal, but this is honestly, okay, so you, you got, you've got your general burgers, right? Yes. Happiness, love, anyway. We're gonna take it to the next level as well. The jalapeno acha. Have you not Firstly, had it before? I've never had it before. I'm not an acha chick. I just the idea of mango You're not being an acha mashed. chick. And spice and... So what's nice about this, it doesn't come through with the heat. It's warm, it's got a hum, not a okay. rah, not a whoops. <laughs> not a whoops. So not a whoops, it's got a hum. And it's so like, it's sweet as well. Mm. It's like, it's honestly, it's like, for me, the best acha hands down. The perfect balance between hum, hum and sweet. And sweet, absolutely. Okay. okay, pan on, get a bit of heat on there. We're gonna add those patties to it, to the pan. We're gonna go with four patties for now. These are so good. This the more the merrier. I mean, we're not going to say no to more burgers, Chef No, Ken. no. Those are going in there. Turn that heat up, okay? In, in the bin. Pop that to the side. So I'm using, I'm frying it in sunflower oil. Okay. What we're doing is the price lock is happening right now in a sense that you can now shop all the deals, like at promo prices, Woolies on selected items yes. for the next three months. Those prices aren't changing. That's how Nicole walked away Wait. and she was like, until December, basically. That's why Nicole came back. And the first thing she said, she didn't say to me, how's your recipe, how's everything looking? She was like, we saved so much money at Woolworths yesterday. Wow. So go and check those out. You have to check it out. It's, it's, it's. It's grocery time now. Anyways, people time. have just got paid, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna, I'm, there. For my next recipe, I'm using some of those items again. We'll check it out. It's mm. going to be so good. Okay, burger patty's going. I'm going to ask you to help me out with a slaw. No problem. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to need, I've got some cabbage, kabash. Mm. Uh, nice and nice and fine. I'm gonna slice up some spring onions for you. Okay. If you can add some mayonnaise, which you're gonna bring that, that creamy tag in us mm. through. How and much then, mayo do we want? I wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna tell you. Okay. I wanna see what you I do. I feel it. Yeah. Okay. My so I do it now. Want, why not? Okay. People are, the, people are like, wanna, they wanna see Kukles, Kukles <laughs> Koso. Because it's also bry season, eh? Bry season starting. So people can invite you over to their bry. They wanna know. Okay, and can, I must can, bring a salad. Can you, can you come through with the sides? No, I did me, I'm a side. You're actually, I'm, it's, <laughs> you were gonna, gonna say, sound so wrong. You I'm were gonna, gonna say you're I'm a side, side chick. chick. <laughs> you're not. Okay, but no, I wanna I'm not see. a side chick. Because, um, yeah. like, I, I kind of feel sad because, I mean, Yes, we're limited to 10 people per bri, mm. but I mean, it's perfectly fine. You can still make the most of it. Please. Between my friends, we like have the competition who comes through with the best sides. And we, we like show off, eh? We show off. But what's your go-to salad that you make that you know no one? You've got to have, you've got to have a coleslaw at a bri. Yes. You've got to have a potato salad. Ooh. So what I do, I get the Willie's Nicola potatoes. They're my favorite potatoes. Mm. I mean, you can say what type of potatoes your favorite. Love mm. it. And then what I do is I have to parboil them and then I finish them on the actual grid, a bri grid, get nice and smoky. Yes. And I do like a little bit of a vinegar and mustard dressing on the soup. Ah, ah. You take it to 
The next level. You must. For real. You must. Can I give you some spring onion? Please. I like how it's working together. It's so cool. It's so... Uh, it's really exciting. Now, if you would like to get your hands on this awesome recipe, make sure to head on over to our website, espressoshow.com. Okay. Chef this is good. You want to make sure that like, you get it. You got to treat your burger patties like you treat a steak. So you got to get a good crust from them. It's important. Then what I'm going to do is I, I'm... I'm so specific about burgers, right? Mm. If I'm going to do a burger patty, I, you must glaze it. Mm. Let's get a nice barbecue sauce coming through. Yeah. And again, another iconic, iconic. I love cooking with that. I was in Not a restaurant. I was Cook in a restaurant, right? Mm. Oh, absolutely. And I tasted the sauce on the burger and I said to the waiter, tell me the truth, is that the Willy Smoky barbecue sauce? He's like, no, we make our own sauce. <laughs> and then I called, like I spoke to the chef later at the end of the meal and I was like, tell me the truth. And he was like, yes. It's the Willy Smoky Barbecue Sauce. You can tell. You can smell it a mile away. Restaurant effect. Willy's provides you with that. Chef exactly. Ken, Did you, what okay. are the other steps that we need to quickly? That's good. Can yes. you add the acha for me? I'm gonna start building this. I don't. Okay. The cameras can't pick this up. But young Graham is circling the like he's watching those burgers. <laughs> he's circling the set. He's coming through. He's watching those burgers. I see you, Graham. How much acha are we putting in? Come, uh, my friend. I must use my own discretion. Yes. <laughs> All right. I want to say there's no, there's no wrong method for this. Okay, what do we do? I'm going to start layering up salon. Okay, I'm going to go tomatoes first. Okay, no, lettuce first. I'm using the herb salad, which is nice because it's got a little bit of that beetroot in it. So mm -hmm. strange, but beetroot on a burger actually works so nice because it's nice and sweet. It comes through with like mm. all, all the flavors coming through. And also the crunch. It offers like a little bit of crunch. And okay, yeah, exactly, because it's raw. So those mm. are going on there. Hit it with a little bit of tomato. And then I'm going to hit it with the patty. Oh. Cheese? Of course. While the tomato, while yeah, the patties please. are still um, warm, hit it with the cheese, let the cheese melt over it. It's like a nice little blanket. Actually, I'm gonna fast forward because Nicole made some for me earlier. I like it, Kuchler. <laughs> well done. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, hit it with the cheese melt on top. You said you wanna double stack it. Of course. Because you like it like that. I said I like it like that, eh. Hey. Hey. Burgers are just like, ah, uh, ah. Uh, I'm eating so healthy during the week, right? It's, it's, it's like rule. But when it comes to Friday, Friday is burger you go day. go wild. And I'm not here tomorrow, so I'm bringing, I'm bringing the Friday vibes through today. Okay. Please come through with them. Just look at that coleslaw. Everyone, wow. if you would like to get your hands on this mouth-watering recipe, head on over to our website, expressoshow.com, where I'm going is somewhere in the back. And if you, if you want to get the coleslaw directly from Kukle, the number's 08235. <laughs> Join us this Saturday evening at 8 on The Insider Essay and stand a chance of winning some incredible prizes featured in the show, including a dinner for two at Foliage Restaurant in Franchhoek, a hand-woven mohair rug from Karoo Looms, a vegan leather wallet and duffel case from Nick and Nickel, and online vouchers from gardening guru Tanya Fisser. That's The Insider Essay. Join us Saturday evening at 8 on SABC3.
Welcome back at your Feel Good Breakfast Show, of course, and we've got the specialist in the building, Grant Hines, going to take us through something special. Now, my question to you is, have you ever experienced that uncomfortable neck stiffness after working or playing games at the computer for quite some time? Now, yes, Mzanzi, this is a real pain in the neck. Now, for many people out there, but with a few simple ergonomic neck exercises and a few other exercises to go with it, we're going to have you feeling 100% better in absolutely no time. And of course, my friend Grant knows this all too well, and he's showing us a couple of our neck exercises and full body exercises when it comes to sitting at the desk for very long and getting us through all the pain. But before we do, Grant, let's talk about something a little bit interesting when it comes to ergonomics. It's, what, what are we really highlighting when we're talking about that? I know it's about the efficiencies and how well, we sit, yeah? Yeah, well, like, your posture in front of the screen is really important because yeah. you often forget while you're busy playing a game, if you've got your controller out or you're sitting at your desk, you, you will, you'll naturally slouch because your mind is focused on something yes, else. Yes. It's the same when you're doing work. It's the same when you're sitting at school and you're sitting at the desk. So you, yes, need, you need to like focus Anna, yeah. on, on, on pulling yourself <laughs> away from that space and being conscious of the body and the ergonomics of your, of your physique. I like how you heard of that. So the rest of you Mzanzi obviously listen up because whether you're even gaming, whether you're at your desk for a full-time job, it doesn't matter. You definitely are going to benefit from these exercises. So like we said, we're going to start from the top down and this is something that I also found when I was a little bit of a gamer back in my day, I would often find my neck just absolutely paining and on top of that, my hands would start to like really cramp. So a really cool exercise just to kind of relax those muscles and get them right. nice and out of the tension that they are staying in. We're literally going to hold our neck to the right hand side for 10 seconds and you're going to try and place your shoulder very close to your ear. I don't know if you're feeling that stretch there, Grant. Yep. Got okay. that, yeah? So you've got to pull this side? Yes, yes, yes. So that's the stretch over there. And while we're doing this, and this is something which I love, we can ease and use efficiency in our timing by also stretching out our arms. So get your hands straight in front of you like that and you're literally going to stretch out both the fingers as well as those forearms that can often cramp. And then let's really roll over to the other side of the neck while we're stretching out these arms at, uh, and our forearms at the same time. And then you can reverse this grip. So 100% getting involved here, stretching out the hands. Oh, getting the upside neck down? Well. Yeah, can you feel that in the, in the form over there? Oh, yeah. Nice, brother. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what it is? Like you want to kind of you have repetitive strain mm. and you want to kind of remove your body from the regular activity that it's used to doing clicking and using yes. your thumbs on the phone or the controller. By doing that man. stuff, it just switches your hands up. Yeah, so another question, Grant, I have for you, and I'm sure a lot of you guys at home might feel the same. When you're sitting at a desk, you often find that, yes, we start off sitting up nice and straight, we've got a great posture, and then all of a sudden we start slouching and those shoulders start to creep forward. And then you look an hour in and you're actually playing games like this. I'm really worried. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it's like on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> this is life. So this is a big reason for why we are preventing ourselves from breathing properly. So not only are we, the, again, tightening the neck and causing a lot of tension in the neck. Diaphragm. Diaphragm as well, but what we want to do is actually set our scap so we can open up our chest. Oh. So we're going to look at just strengthening the muscles at the back of the shoulders and the rear, which is the posterior chain, and those shoulder blades, and squeeze those together. So I've got some uh, makeshift weights for you. Oops, sorry about that. Whoa! <laughs> some more video games. Uh, some hand -eye success for this one. So what we're going to do is just simply bend over, all right, and you're literally going to pull the weight straight behind you, squeezing those shoulder blades oh, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel that squeeze? Yeah. Go straight out, and now a nice wide one. Beautiful. You feeling that squeeze over there? Hundred percent. I think we need we need like a two liter. <laughs> yeah, man. We're gonna crush this moment right here, and then you'll feel that squeeze, and that's gonna essentially set you up right and keep you stay straight up for a lot longer in your session, and allow you to continue to breathe. And the byproduct of that is obviously far more efficiency. You're obviously gonna have a longer session when you are playing. Last but not least, one big issue that I notice a lot of the time when we're sitting on a chair: lower back issues. So we really want to just mobilize that lower back. I don't know if you ever feel any pain in that lower back region at all? Sometimes, on occasion. Okay. Often uh, after I sleep in the morning. <laughs> if you ask me that question, I'll be like, 100% all the time, man. I'm getting old, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, so what we're going to do is something very similar. It's like a cat-camel hybrid, right? So we're actually just working that lower back and getting it more mobile yeah, yeah. so that we're not resting on our lumbar right throughout that session. So we're staying up nice and tall using the core yeah. and we're activating all the muscles around both the core and the pelvic girdle. So what you're going to do first is stretch your neck up and you're sort of arching your back just like a cat would and you've got a big stretch there and then for two seconds you're going to start and reverse this and invert this. Wow, this like, actually feels incredible. Yeah, you're feeling that stretch yeah, right there? Yeah, I feel oh, it man. all over like, my arms as well. And now you're going to bend over, Grant, stick your shoulder blades and your lower part of your back out and you're going to really hunch over now and do the exact same thing once again. It's come up nice and tall. 
and then straight wow, back down. Wow, this is amazing! Again. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a man evolving here. This is evolution. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't expect this to feel this good. Yeah, man, and this is something simple that you can do literally 15 seconds for the day. Every day, consistency is going to get you jacked, yeah. and get you straight up and sorted. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm gonna, Are you feeling? I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm gonna <laughs> enjoy it while you can. So these are the exercises, and they are so easy, and it's going to provide you with the relief from tension, especially when you're getting back to feeling 100, percent and that's in no time. Now my last tip, remember to take a break every half an hour, stand up, stretch those legs, and take a sip of the 100% freshness and goodness with Crush. I hope you enjoy that, brother. Mm. <laughs> so good. Mm. That's 100% good, man. <laughs> Get your 100% fresh, tasty, fruity, and refreshing goodness with Crush. Made with love by Clover. Well, listen, uh, you will remember that yeah. there was so much excitement in our studio with the launch of MTN Arena. And one lucky viewer was given the chance to win 5,000 Rand in cash. And today we are super excited to announce that, that winner. winner. Oh, yeah. drum roll, please, because we're about to announce that winner. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. Congratulations to L'Oreal Duplessis, uh, who is the lucky winner of that 5,000 Rand cash prize. Let's Come give on. it up for L'Oreal. Come on! Come on. Hey, that's a big Woo! prize, that's a big prize. And we've actually got L'Oreal wow. on the line right now. L'Oreal, you must be so excited. Congratulations. Good morning. Morning. Yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> oh, wow. It's beautiful. L'Oreal, we, we, we were very excited when yeah. we launched uh, MTN Arena and the tournament in our studio. Yeah. What made you want to take part? I am very competitive, so I just wanted to give my um, gaming skills a try. And it's definitely the perfect type of it's game to get into off. a tournament to get onto if you are the competitive type. Uh, and you've obviously had lots of fun with it. Have you continued to play after we had the tournament run on the show? Or did you stop after you entered because you <laughs> knew you had that 5,000 Rand in your back pocket? show actually. Uh, okay. Excellent, excellent. Okay. L'Oreal, tell me this, once you had reached yeah. like a certain score, right? Yeah. And, and how many times did you carry on playing to make sure that you stayed on top of that leaderboard to perform as best as you can? <laughs> Wow! Okay. You're that good, You're that good Lori. Okay. So, so here's this 5,000 rand that you've, you've won. Congratulations. How, well, what's the plan with it? How are you going to be spending it? Thank you. Um, as a mom, I would want to buy baby supplies first. Oh, yeah. And then a close friend and I, we are planning to buy um, food hampers in December for families in need for Christmas time. Oh, oh man, beautiful. Oh, this is beautiful. Bless you, that's the amazing. Heart. That's the absolutely heart. amazing. L'Oreal, uh, uh, thanks thank very you. much for having fun with us. Congratulations. Hope you and the little one enjoy it. And uh, bless your heart for, for even being so generous yeah. as to think of others yeah. during your time of winning and to spread the joy in that way. That's absolutely wonderful. Have a great day, L'Oreal. Ah, fantastic. This so is so cool. beautiful. This is so cool. I thought she would say like lots and lots and lots of data because I'm going to need it to clap everybody on the game. But you see <laughs> the heart more. is pulling through. Uh, and it's so beautiful. It's such an inspirational uh, 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 announcement that we've had this Absolutely, morning. Absolutely, yeah. uh, So you know next time when we have a competition like this, you need to get your game on yeah, and yeah. then enter. We certainly couldn't be happier to be announcing a winner. And so next time when we talk about it again, make sure you get in on all of those actions because you could be the next L'Oreal. <laughs> Because you're worth it.
What's better than a sugar-coated, deliciously crispy golden brown donut and 100% Arabica beans brewed to perfection? Treat yourself and warm up your morning with a little sweetness from Mac Cafe with the all-new mini donut and cappuccino offer. A little lovin' doesn't have to cost a lot. Great coffee, simple. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Happy birthday, a very happy birthday to you. Hey, welcome back to your feel-good breakfast show, Expresso on SABC3. Now, when you hear that sound, you know it's about that time where we do the shimmy and wish you, our loved and loyal viewers, a very happy birthday. Yeah, let's see whose company you are in sharing this beautiful special day with. And it is none other than one of SA's underground actors, Ayanda Makayi, who turns 28 years old today, um, best known as Sol in the South African television drama series. She's also one of the UNHCR ambassadors, so she's a busy young lady. She aims to redefine the narrative of fellow refugee brothers and sisters in Africa and Africa and to top it off um, we will be seeing uh, the his face soon in the new blood psalms series which sounds absolutely amazing Ooh, I um, absolutely love Ayanda he's one of our best upcoming actors in South Africa so happy birthday to you yeah man uh, congratulations have a wonderful wonderful day and he's put Queenstown on the map so hopefully the whole Aww. Queenstown is celebrating and having a party today happy birthday Ayanda let's see who else is celebrating their birthdays today a happy birthday to Trishen Hansraj and that's coming to you from the Selena family and friends. Happy birthday, my friend. And then we'd like to wish my beautiful mother, Marianne David, a big happy 55th birthday. May God bless you in abundance and always protect you. Thank you for being the best mother. You always put your children first. We love you so much and that's from your daughter, Genevieve Manuel. I wish our beloved mother, Gran and Nana, Joan, a blessed 90th birthday. Have May you be blessed with good health and and please continue being a beacon of light and inspiration in all our lives. Lots of love from Barbara, Sharon, Shireen, and families. A very happy and blessed third birthday to our baby, Peter Reddy. We wish you all the best on this blessed day. We love you so much, big boy, from your daddy, Ricardo, mommy, uh, De Deanne, uh, Granny, Mala, and uncles, Deepak, and Leonardo. Happy birthday to you. And then someone's turning 10 today. Happy 10th uh, birthday to Lauren Dielman. Stay as the beautiful young lady that you are. May God bless you more, sweetheart. Have a great day. And that's from your aunt Elaine, Uncle Jerome, family and friends. Then a happy birthday to these lovely ladies. We've got Grandmom Ruth Wen and granddaughter Tammy Bergman. Blessed returns and innumerable memories continue to follow in your life's journey. May all the love and happiness you share with others return to you tenfold. Enjoy a never-ending bliss. All the love from Elaine, Jerome and Blake Swartz. Happy 39th birthday to Tam Tam Um Hope your special day offers you all what your heart's desires. May God bless you with many more years. Enjoy your day. We love you, Mchana, from your aunt in Berlin, uh, East London. Tatum, we wish our granddaughter Tatum Zendaya Joseph a very happy third birthday. We pray for God's blessings over you on this special day with lots of love from your grandparents, Ellen and Queenie Joseph. Happy birthday to you, cutie pie. Oh, that's a nice picture as well. Absolutely gorgeous. So if you'd like to send through a dedication, we want your videos, guys. We want them to be WhatsApp to 71 646 Double five one. Send us a video of you singing, of you dancing. Uh, maybe catch them waking up first thing in the morning. Uh, we'd love to connect with you and share these special moments together live on the show right now. Though, let's get back into those news headlines. It's just gone one minute past seven o'clock. Here's another look at the news headlines on this Thursday morning. On the national news front, Health Minister Dr. Zwilim Kize says that South Africa will need to move to a level one lockdown and a return to normal activities as part of its economic recovery. In an interview with a radio station yesterday, Mkhize said that this or his department was initially worried about a possible surge in coronavirus cases when moving to level two lockdown, but early data shows there hasn't been a major upsurge in cases. The minister confirmed that the government was currently discussing the issue. Grammy Award-winning Lady Smith Black Mambazo has joined calls for the lockdown regulations to be eased to benefit the creative sector. Manager Kolani Majosi said that calls by the creative sector were legitimate. The call was first made last week when artists and members of the creative sector in KwaZulu-Natal blocked the N3 in Durban and staged a mini-concert. They called for venues to be allowed to accommodate some 70% of their usual capacity and for the curfew to be extended to 2 a.m. 
Reflecting on international headlines, people on Twitter have expressed their anger at a video shared by Kenya's tourism minister, Najib Balala, showing wildebeest blocked from their annual migration, one of the new seven wonders of the world, by a tourist camp built on the other side of the Mara River. Now, the video shows wildebeest in the middle of the river and others being turned back by a group of people. Balala said he had spoken to the local governor and wants the camp in the famous Masai Mara to be removed to clear a path for the animals. Now, final clinical trials for a coronavirus vaccine developed by AstraZeneca and Oxford University have been put on hold after a participant had, suspected, had a suspected adverse reaction in the UK. It's been described as it is a, quote, routine pause in the case of an unexplained illness. The vaccine is seen as a strong contender among dozens being developed globally. It recently moved to phase three testing and has involved some 30,000 participants in America, the UK, as well as Brazil and South Africa. Now, next entertainment news uh, that won't go down well with thousands of fans. After 14 years of laughs, drama and sibling rivalry, Keeping Up With The Kardashians is coming to an end and fans are reeling. Kim Kardashian West yesterday posted the statement on Twitter and said it was with heavy hearts that they've made the difficult decision as a family to say goodbye to the show. The TV reality show about the Kardashian family has run for 14 years and made global megastars of Kim, her siblings Courtney, Chloe and Rob, their partner partners, parents and children. Despite being heavily panned by critics and accused of making people famous for being famous, the show has enjoyed huge ratings, won awards and been one of E! Channel's most successful shows. Kim, who's now 39, has since become one of the world's most celebrated women with hundreds of millions of social media followers and a lucrative beauty business. Kim added, quote, this show made us who we are and I will forever be in debt to everyone who played a role in shaping our, ca our careers and changing our lives forever. The final season, its 21st, will air in early 2020. That's it for the news at 7 o'clock. Here's another look at the world of sports with Graham. Thanks so much, Kat. Let's kick it off with football first. And uh, Kaiser Chiefs having parted ways with head coach Ernst Middentorp. That comes just a few days after they failed to win the 2019-2020 PSL season despite leading the table going into the final day's play. Chiefs chairman Kaiser Motong and the club's management made the decision yesterday. The 61-year-old Middentorp has been with the club since December of 2018. Saturday, Chiefs, of course, were held to a one all draw against Baraka FC, this resulting in Mamelodi Sundowns winning the league for the third consecutive season. On to international rugby news. Four South African rugby players have been included in the Pro 14 Dream Team for the 2019-2020 season. Cheetahs hooker Joseph Dweber made the cut as the only player from an actual South African side. But fellow South Africans uh, Jaco van der Valt, uh, Duan van der Merwe and Pia Skuman, all from the Pro 14 Team Edinburgh, have also been included in that Dream Team. Then on to dramatic tennis currently unfolding in the US. The 23-time Grand Slam winner Serena Williams booked her place in the US Open semi-finals looking very much on course after beating off uh, Bulgarian Svetlana Pironkova 4-6, 6-3, 6-2 last night. Williams is a six-time US Open champion and is chasing a record equaling 24th Grand Slam title. Fourth seed Naomi Osaka also securing her semi-final spot after beating American Shelby Rogers in straight sets 6-3, 6-4. The 22-year-old uh, Japanese star will now face American 28th seed Jennifer Brady in the semi-finals. Then, of course, into the men's singles title now wide open with the exit of Novak Djokovic. German tennis player Alexander Zverev, he reached his first ever U.S. Open semi-final after seeing off Croatian Borna Koric. Zverev fought back from a sit-down to beat the 27th seed 1-6-7-6-7-6-6-3. So the 23-year-old now faced Spanish 20th seed Pablo Carreno Busta in the semi-finals. That was after he beat Canadian 12th seed Denis Shapovalov 3-6, 7-6, 7-6, love 6, 6-3 six, in a titanic encounter that lasted more than four hours. That's where we leave our sport for now. Let's take one last gander at the weather. As we get into the final look at the weather forecast for the day, here's how some of our viewers have woken up today. Mami Baliti shared this gloomy sunrise picture captured from her backyard in Klerkstorp. You will experience beautiful warm temperatures with a maximum of 30 degrees. We shift our focus now to Nick Lombard, who shared, uh, who always leaves us stunned rather with these golden sunrises captured in the Quiver Tree Forest District of South Africa in the Northern Cape. Your temperatures for the day range from 9 to a sunny 32 degrees. Thank you so much for your 
stunning sunrise pictures. I hope that you will have a fantastic Thursday morning. Now, plumes of smoke from wildfires in the U.S. state of California descended on the San Francisco area yesterday, causing the sky over the region to turn orange. Strong winds pushed smoke and ash from some of these blazes to northern parts of the state. Residents of San Francisco and surrounding areas woke up to darkened skies. It still appeared to be dawn at 10.45 as the sun's rays struggled to penetrate the thick smoke. Some 14,000 firefighters are battling 28 major blazes across California amid a historic heat wave. Wildfires have until now devastated more than 2.5 million acres in the state this year. But here's what the weather has in store in your part of the country. Sunny skies are expected across South Africa with isolated showers for the Eastern Cape. Bologuan starts off the morning on a low of 7, reaching a high of 25 degrees. Bombela, your temperatures range from 13 to 25. The sun is out in Pretoria with a maximum of 29. Right next door, Josie Maboneng, 927. Mahikeng, your low for the day is 13, but will reach an afternoon temperature of 30 degrees. Glegsdorp, also a sunny day at a maximum of 30 degrees. Kimberley, your low is 12th, your high is 31. Bloemfontein, 829. Richards Bay, you start off the morning on a low of 15 with an afternoon temperature of 25. Do expect 49% chance of rain. Peter Mersburg, 1224. Durban, South Africa's playground, 1724. Entata down the Eastern Cape. It's a rainy day at 40% chance of rain. Gannet and Asimondi, East London, with 56% chance of rain. Namklanje. Cradock, 722. Also a rainy day in the friendly city, Port Elizabeth, at a low of 14 with a high of 18. Showers for George at 90% chance of rain and a windy day for Cape Town at 31.5 kilometers an hour with a low of 12 and a high of 20 degrees. Expect a very cloudy day in Worcester, 1021. Sutherland, the sunny one for you at a maximum of 23. And Uppington starts off the day with a minimum of 15 degrees and a maximum of 34 degrees. Now, remember, whatever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of day. But if you do have pets, well, this conversation with Dr. Kareen and Graham is just for you. Whether it's thunder, fireworks, or just loud music, all pets are hypersensitive to loud noises, especially dogs, and they'll react in some shape or form. However, for some dogs and cats, these noises cause such distress that they actually suffer from what is known as a noise phobia. And here to tell us a little bit more about it is our ultra cool vet, Dr. Karin Brink from Ultra Pets. Doc, always so good to see you. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Uh, very good. Loving the hair. Thank you so much for bringing a little spring into our space. Um, but of course, this morning we focused on something that's, that's quite negative. And when we say noise phobia, how would you differentiate between a dog or a cat just being scared of a loud noise, which is instinctive, I'm sure, versus an actual noise phobia? We're not just scared of a loud noise. It's something that happens incidental. Like say you break a plate or there's suddenly a loud crash and your dog and your cat runs away. But a noise phobia, what's the main thing that differentiates it? It's persistent. Always when there's a certain noise, they start getting scared. It can sometimes be a combination of noises and it's usually irrational. You know, they'll be hiding away or trying to run away, but it's always persistent and it's always irrational. I can speak from experience. And so if, if I kind of give a lecture, if I get on my high horse and start speaking very intently, my one dog gets all upset as if I'm shouting or I'm angry. <laughs> and I, I, I've seen it firsthand that his behavior really does radically change. What causes a pet to develop a noise phobia in the first place? There's various things that can cause it. The one thing is we intentionally or unintentionally can create this fear. For example, say you are scared of thunder and you're the one hiding underneath the bed and grab your dog to hide away, then they will start being scared as well because that's what you do. It can also be that I had a very negative experience associated while there was a noise phobic event. For example, say something traumatic happened. They were bitten by another dog. They were left alone. The first time they heard thunder, gunshots, um, fireworks. Then they immediately associate the noise with a bad experience. Or it can just be a lack of so socialization. When they were puppy, they were not exposed to these noises and suddenly as an adult they are exposed and they do not know what it is so they start becoming scared of it. What then are some of the biggest noise phobia triggers? I mean fireworks probably stands out and I, I think what we put our poor pets through just so we can experience a guy Fawkes is, um, is you know terrible but what are some of those major triggers? The 
magic triggers, like you said, is fireworks, thunder, gunshots, and even loud noises like certain birds or other animals in the area. What is really interesting, especially with the thunder and phobia, my Jack Russell had it, and she passed away a couple of years ago, but she was very scared of thunder. When she felt the change in barometric pressure, because there's a change before a thunderstorm starts, she immediately started showing these noise phobic you know, clinical signs, panting, hiding away. So, but those are the biggest triggers for noise phobia. How then can we identify if our pet is suffering and how can we help them most importantly? Different pets show different behavior when they are scared. We get some that would hide away, some try to get away from the noise. Some pets will show dilated pupils, they will soil themselves or urinate over themselves, they will whine, pace and some of them just become hyperactive. All of them are different, but if you see abnormal behavior during a noise phobic event, that gives you a clue that something's going on. And then what you can do as an owner, you can try to change the environment. Have a crate or a dog house that is well insulated, put a blanket over it, put polystyrene in it that I can't hear the noises, especially when you're not there. When they are indoor with you, close the windows, close the drapes, but on a slow um, noise like a TV or a fan. And if you know your dog is going to get scared before thunder or lightning or anything specific, you can go and exercise to help them get rid of, um, you know, some endorphins and get endorphins in that I can feel a little bit happier. You can also try to bake a pressure wrap. A thunder shirt is a really good one. You can go and Google it or you can buy a thunder shirt. That constant pressure helps them to feel a little bit less anxious. You can also go and look at certain supplements or pheromones that can aid in reducing stress. And then definitely behavior modification is quite a good one. You can desensitize them to a noise. There's quite good resources on the internet, but I would just warn people to do this under the guidance of a behaviorist or veterinary behaviorist. You do not make them more scared of the noises. And then also if it's really, really bad, like it was with my Jack Russell, I used to give a medication before a thunderstorm that you can calm down. And additionally, I did some of the other stuff I mentioned as well. So there are a myriad of things. I suppose on the flip side of that, feeding yes. off one of the, the things that you said there, is there anything that we could be doing that would be making it worse? What do we want to avoid doing? I, uh, what I dealt with in practice was sometimes when the pets soil themselves, that people would immediately try to you know, chastise them or to punish them. And you must never punish a scared pet or a pet that's in distress. It will just make the behavior worse. And you must also never reinforce the behavior. Do not give them treats or anything when they are scared to reinforce the driver. Try to distract them, like the stuff I mentioned, or give them a safe haven. But never treat them when they are scared as well. Okay, and a good cuddle goes a long way. Um, after all, yes. they are our best friends. Doctor, thank you so much. Some absolute gems in there, and hopefully people will be a bit more conscientious about the noises that they subject pets to, but also feel more equipped to be able to look after their little ones when a noise phobia does rear its head. Doctor, thank you so much, as always, for your insights. It's a pleasure. Keep well. If you have any questions about uh, noise phobia or anything relating to your pet, you can ask Dr. Corinne yourself on the Ultra Pet website under the Ask Dr. Corinne section. Simply visit ultrapet.co.za. Your story of hope published by Cadbury Dairy Milk. Now, there's a story in everyone, so whether real or imagined, share yours and it could be amongst the 20 most inspiring stories compiled into an e-book that brings hope, light and wonder to orphaned and vulnerable children across the land. Add 87 240 to your WhatsApp contacts, follow the prompts and share your story as a Word document, a PDF or a video recording. Standard data rates apply.
pet owners will know all too well that ticks and fleas and all other parasites can really be a constant burden for our poor dogs. I think for us as well. And as a pet owner myself, I'm very excited to chat to our next guest this morning, who's here to introduce a truly revolutionary product that treats and prevents parasites in one easy chewable. And here to tell us all about NexGuard Spectra is Dr. Michelle Enslin, the resident vet at Boehringer Engelheim. Dr. Michelle, good morning. How are you? I'm great, thanks, Graham. How are you? I'm doing very well, thanks. The, the subject matter notwithstanding, I know it, it's a difficult thing, but it's something that we all need to stay on top of. I've got two beautiful pups, and this is something their health matters a lot to me, like I think all pet owners and parasites can be a massive problem. We all know that dogs are prone to catching ticks, fleas, mites, worms, especially going into a new season. How serious are parasites and can they be? And what are the complications that can arise if left untreated? Well, Graham, the complications can range from mild to incredibly severe, uh, depending mainly on the type of parasite that we're dealing with, as well as uh, the length of time that uh, that particular parasite infestation has left untreated for. So if we are dealing, for an example, with an internal parasite load, such as uh, a worm burden, um, some of the major complications that you could see would be the onset of very severe a bloody diarrhea and um, when we see a bloody diarrhea it can affect more than one organ system in the dog they can develop quite severe anemia and as a result um, it can affect them quite substantially later on. If we're dealing, on the other hand, with uh, external parasites, one of the more common things that we see is tick bite fever. That's usually what pet owners uh, understand to be. And uh, Oh gosh, sorry, my cat has just. <laughs> it's making it's making a guest appearance. It's it's perfect timing. <laughs> so external parasites uh, would be your uh, your tick burden, and one of the major complications that we see from that is the onset of tick bite fever. And um, the problem with this is that many many ticks in South Africa actually contain another type of parasite within their saliva, known as Babesia, or more colloquially known as Bilirubin. In their saliva, as soon as they bite your dog, that parasite moves into the bloodstream of your dog. And uh, that's when we start to see really severe disease uh, manifestations resulting. Because what it does is it causes um, massive blood loss in your animal. And if that dog does not receive a blood transfusion, uh, many of them can actually die. So the complications can be really severe. And one of the very... Um, I would say one of the more important complications of parasite burden that isn't very often spoken about is the zoonotic potential. I'm referring to the fact that these parasites can be transmissible to the human members of our family, namely um, children as well as immune compromised individuals such as the elderly or uh, maybe someone who is undergoing chemotherapy for an example. So let's go to the source. How do dogs contract these various parasites? Where, what's the, the entry point if you you will. Yeah, so this is quite heavily dependent on the type of parasite that we're dealing with, whether we're dealing with an internal parasite or external. External parasites, they mainly sort of reside in the external environment, such as on the grass, like very high grass blades. And when we're dealing with internal parasites, you tend to see the eggs and the more immature stages of that worm in, in the soil um, outside. But one of the big misconceptions, I think, with parasite infestations is that many pet owners believe that if they have a dog that is strictly indoor or my dog never leaves the yard, for an example, they believe that maybe their pet is um, absolved of the risk of contracting these parasites. And this simply is not the case. A flea, for an example, um, if you see an adult jumping flea on your, on your dog, what's actually happening there is that flea is only representing 5% of the total population but what happens as a result of that is the rest of the, the, the parasite population, so the sub-adult members of that life cycle are all existing within the internal environment um, of your home. So carpets, skirting boards, even your dog's bedding, all of these places represent a significant risk for infestation. And this is something that we need to keep in mind when you are selecting a tick and flea product, that we are um, selecting one that is actually catering 
for controlling the, the environmental burden as well, not just on the host, which is your dog. Before everyone races out and cleans absolutely every corner of their house, how do we identify if our pet has been infected by one of these, these parasites in the three groups that you've covered? Well, Graham, this is a bit more of a tricky one because uh, most of the time the symptoms um, are quite nonspecific. So if you have a dog that is perhaps maybe losing quite a lot of weight or maybe is not coming to greet you with the same level of energy that it may do usually, that animal may be showing signs suggestive of a parasite burden. Um, if you have a dog that is scratching quite a lot, that could be an indication of mites or fleas. But like I said, it's really nondescript symptoms. And that's why prevention rather than treating after the fact becomes so important. And that's where uh, NextGuard Spectra comes into play because it's got this amazing preventative aspect um, of it in the monthly chew. Um, many of, and oftentimes these dogs that have got parasite burdens don't show symptoms at all. They tend to just soldier on without any kind of sign of disease processes. And then when you present your dog at the vet clinic at a later stage, maybe for his annual vaccination or checkup, the vet often will pick up a worm burden or ticks and fleas in the consultation. And you really just don't want it to get to that point. So now we know that um, NextGuard obviously works on all fronts, which is amazing, and it's a chewable. Can it work on all dogs, all breeds of any age? The NextGuard Spectra spectrum, what falls under that? So NextGuard Spectra um, is presented in five different weight sizes, which is really great, all ranging from a minimum of two kilograms all the way up to 60 kilograms. If you have a dog that weighs more than 60 kilograms, then all you need to do is just give them the chew for that weight class and then select one of the other classes in order to make up the correct dosage. Um, in terms of age, uh, it's safe to use for puppies as young as eight weeks of age. So oh. if you have your pup you know, coming in for its first or second vaccination at the vet, for an example, that's where NextGuard Spectra is perfect. And of course, it's safe for all breeds. And it really does tackle every parasite that you've mentioned, which is amazing. Where is it available? Um, so it's available at any veterinary clinic around the country. Um, if they do not have it in stock, you can always just ask reception to order it in for you. And it's also readily available at um, any vet shop around the country. Well, I know your, your cat personal assistant is going to come in and tell you you've got another Zoom meeting in a moment, so I'm going to let you go for now. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate your time and your insights. Great. Thanks so much for having me, Graham. You can protect your dog from parasites like ticks, fleas, mites, even worms with just next guard spectra. And it's as easy as feeding your dog one tasty chewable just once a month. For more information on this amazing product, you can visit nextguard.co.za and I really suggest you do. New NextGuard Spectra, the broad spectrum monthly chew that protects inside and out in one easy step. NextGuard Spectra, just one chew, so easy for you.
Hey, welcome back. It's your Feel Good Breakfast show. It's a Thursday morning. Always so good to be in your company. Thanks for joining us. Uh, listen, we wanted to quickly check out Facebook yes. uh, because the question of the morning was around mm. fillings, right? Fillings for fit cook. And we're fillings doing something uh, really special. And we're asking you, what is your favorite filling for your fit cook delicacies? And we're asking you all on social mm. media and you have come through with the business. And we're starting off with Gift Tnana BNK. Says mince and any hard cheese. Mm, you uh, can't go wrong with that. Hard cheese with uh, mince? Okay. I hope it's malted. Never thought about that, hey? Mm, I hope it's malted cheese that was hard? Probably. No, no, like, like a hard cheese, like a very flavorful cheese, right? Mm. Then classic Tarantino. Are the minced beef and cheese fillings hit the spot? Yes, can't go wrong with that. Ashraf says Evo and Slap Chips. Give me a local. I like that. It's a weird little interesting fusion there, actually. <laughs> That's Ashraf, right? Okay. <laughs> uh, Rulin says Plain, plain with coffee. Hey, there's nothing like a when, when the fit cook is really made well. Yeah, you you know, can actually just have it on its own. Yeah, that just uh, that just speaks I like to that. its quality. I mean, I I can't go wrong with that either. Now, Shall so I go with I, the next one? Yeah, yeah, yeah please um, do. It, please IGTT do it. says obvious. Hot peri peri acha. No pomp and show. Simple as South Africa. No pomp and show. Cat, what does that mean? Like 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 pomp and ceremony, pomp and circumstance. Like it's it's not uh, grand. It's not. Oh, show. It's just simple Nzanzi Monati. I see you, Titi. Obvious. Obvious. <laughs> and then lastly, Zama says, a cheese, Russian, and mm, a side of fried chips. A gym instructor's nightmare. I definitely <laughs> agree with you there. But look, I bet you guys didn't think you could do what we're about to do in the kitchen with our fed cook. Check this out. I bet you can't do what we're about to do. I bet you could do what we're about to do, but I bet you're going to be so inspired by how we're going to take it and take it to a whole new level. Switch it up, mix it up, spice it up, curry it up, and then fit cook it up in a way you have never seen before. Do you know why? Because when it comes to South African heritage food, there are so many choices. You find them everywhere. You see them everywhere. But fit cook filled with curry mince, it always does jump to mind. To celebrate uh, Woolies promo prices for longer, which is such a fantastic initiative by Woolies, uh, where a variety of quality everyday basics like flour, sugar, pasta, sunflower oil, pilchards, and many other items are on promotion for three months guaranteed. You've never heard of anything like this. Mm. Items like that on promotion for a whole three months. Think about that. Think about that. And Chef Clem is using a tin of pilchards and turning this into tin fish curry with amaguinha, fat cook. Uh, this is one of our favorite budget-friendly recipes that make use of these promo ingredients. It's budget-friendly, but the thing about it is such a delicacy, a South oh. African proper heritage meal. Oh. Oh, like you've never known. Yeah. Like you've always known, but you're but about to, it's to be reintroduced so to it. Allow me to reintroduce it. Chef Clem. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> this price lock is something new. Mm? It's different. It's yeah. not being done. Yeah. It's really great. Yeah. Let me tell you about something that's like really awesome. Uh -huh. See the pasta over there? Yes. Okay, for the next three months, done, done, done. Official, it will not change. It Five will. packs for 60 bucks. Don't come here with lies, man. Five packs of pasta. For, for three 60, months. For 60 rand. For three months also. For the next three months, boom, official. I love it. I know, it's just like... Mm. <laughs> What? Where else do you look? Where then? do you go? Oh, where do we I look? Know. Where do I look? Oh my goodness. This okay. is fantastic. So we're taking full advantage of this price up for the next three months. Yeah. I'm going to come through with some dishes that yeah. are really, really, really great. Yeah. So awesome that it's Heritage Month because combining those two, it just makes yeah. so much sense. Uh, I spoke to you earlier. You're like, you don't know much about tin fish curry. No, I've never heard of oh. tin fish curry. I've, I grew up on tin fish. Uh, yeah, uh, lucky star tin fish. I mean, I've had it so so many times. I mean, my mom used to make that with uputu and uche. But I don't know if it was a curry or if it was just like, just a, like a stew. Of, okay, uh, tin fish. I don't know. But I mean, like, lucky stars like raised how many people in Africa? All I of. mean, we we are All we are of. we are like okay. So what All I absolutely of. love about this is because like you know moms are so amazing. They yeah. they can take the smallest amount of ingredients and feed like. The community. The community. Yeah. This is one of the recipes that I, my grand used to make. It is. I, just, I cannot tell you, like when you say it, yeah. I can already taste it. I can smell it. Yeah. I can hear the sounds in the background yeah. of like my grand is in the kitchen. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. And so, you go for seconds. Do you, you know go how, for how seconds. many times when you've been fed this, and you've you know wanted you, to go oh, for seconds. And meals like this, you, mm -hmm. you go for seconds. Yeah, because then they fly fast. So people know, okay, yeah. sunflower oil, also on the price lock. Yeah. Sunflower oil going in. And what we're going to do is we're going to cook those onions. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the preparation that actually happens for this dish is the curry sauce itself. Yeah. The fish is the last thing that goes in, which just gets stirred through the sauce. Because it's easy to make. It's oh. that easy to make. So you just throw it into the pot. Which I absolutely love. I mean, people are getting back to work right now. The traffic. Oh. What's up? 
That's wow. the only thing I'm not pleased about. The but traffic. I'm happy people are back at work and working. It really does make me happy because there's been so much stress and anxiety around that, that people are going to be able to provide for their families again. Yes. And are, are able to, going to be, uh, are, are also going to be able to earn a living again is, is, is such good news. Which it absolutely is. Yeah. And I also feel like it's a great time of the year because this is a time the summer's happening, yeah. the seasons are changing. Yeah. This is a time when the streets are full of people. Yeah. There's a certain noise that South Africa like just radiates over this time of the year and it's coming back. Mm -hmm. Talking about noise, yeah. when you're cooking your onions, this is the noise you want to hear. Put my mic right there. Okay. I it's a it. You don't want to hear okay? okay. You've got to slow cook those onions, especially because everything's very delicate. The flavors okay. are very delicate. In here. Yeah. You want to release the delicate sweetness out of the onions and the only way we can do that, oh. slow, slow, slow. Lovely. Add a little bit of salt to it that draws yeah. the moisture out of the onions. Uh -huh. So while the onions are actually cooking, they kind of like simmer gently in their own moisture. That's the way you do that. Okay, cool. It. Then, once it gets to the point where it's beautifully yes. cooked down, so imagine yeah. it's like super soft and golden brown. Mm -hmm. How golden brown? Like that. Okay? And you want it to have an even brown, yeah. or like that. Yeah. You want it to be even. You don't want to blister it. As soon as you blister it, you're browning the, and you're browning the, sh the sugars in there. It's going to go bitter. You don't want that. Yeah, I've got a trick for you. So if you want to know how golden brown, go on to uh, Expresso Show uh, on Facebook or on Twitter or on uh, Instagram and find a picture of Chef Clem. Screen grab the picture of Chef Clem. Print it out. Put it in your kitchen to check how golden brown your onions must be every day. Always constantly be looking at Chef Clem's picture. And then that's how your things if must you be golden brown. actually do that, South Africa, Please take a picture of it and we will put it up on the show. <laughs> we will, for real. Wow. For real. Wow. Okay. So that's going, what's happening? Garlic and ginger went in. Yeah. Garlic and ginger, this look like they're so mm. inexpensive, but when you talk about the heavy weights in the kitchen, yeah. that's what you add to yeah. take a, an average stew, an average dish to the next level. Okay. And you, you have to have that in a curry. Okay, things are happening really quickly now. Mm -hmm. Garam masala, don't worry about making your own spice mix if you're in a rush. Okay. Willie's have it. I spoke about this earlier in the week. It's not, it's not just mild, medium, yeah. hot. Yeah. Now you got like different spice mixes from all, all over, over the country. Yeah. Talk about embracing heritage. I yeah, absolutely I love, love that. All of our spices, all of South Africa's favorite spices coming together on the shelf to make it so convenient for you to bring some of your favorite heritage meals to life in the most beautiful way. Nice. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So the spices go in. What you want to do is you want to toast those spices as soon as you can smell it. Yes, sir. And it smells beautiful. Yes, sir. You can go in with your water. Uh -huh. So again, remember I said you kind of want to have your onions cooked really brown. Yes. And that's very, very important. Because mm -hmm. uh, also when you have onions that are quite like this, quite firm and quite like raw. Yeah. A bit of flavor comes through, like a tart flavor. You don't yeah. want that. Yeah. So We're gonna give that 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 brownness a, a code. We're gonna call it an NW50. That NW50, NW50 is the, the the brownness that we want. There we go. Our, okay, uh, I dig it. Okay. Then your tin fish. The icon. Mm -hmm. Okay, going okay. in with the sauce yeah. because there's so much flavor in mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. That's going in. And here's the important thing. Here, here's where people get it wrong a little bit. Yeah. You don't stir right now. Okay. You gently fold uh -huh. and you gently you move the fish mm -hmm. around the sauce. Mm -hmm. You don't want to break that fish up. You want to keep it as whole as possible. Yeah. Which, oh, 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 by the way, how good are those maguinhas? Those, these maguinhas look really good. I'm actually gonna just, ooh. Oh, okay. Sorry, Kelly, come in. Kelly, come in. Just, just quickly, just quickly. Mm -hmm. Kelly is the maguin queen. Maguin queen. Just, just say hello to the people. Say hello to the people. <laughs> She brought these maguinas to life. Oh, Kelly, these are so good. She's so, so she's delicious. so good. Mm. She makes the best maguinas, so mm. I had to ask her to do this mm -hmm. morning. All mm -hmm. you need is that, dumping that, a little bit of, like, just in your face. It's feel good food, the stuff that we were raised on, mm -hmm. and now that the price stock's happening, we can have it every day. Every Listen, day. If you want to get involved with this recipe, we've made it really easy for you. Go onto our website. It's www.expressoshow.com. We've loaded the recipe together with all of the ingredients you're going to need. It's not a lot of ingredients, but they are all so wow. good. They taste and you smell like for it. it is the best of South, Don't South mess. African Don't heritage. Mess. I will not. Uh, and you are going to love Coming it. Your through entire the entire family is going going to love it. Happy eating, everybody. Now this is the Woody's difference.
Cadbury Dairy Milk Glass and a Half project presents There's a Story in Everyone. Visit cadbury.co.za forward slash story time for more information on how to share your inspirational story. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to Live with Expresso. As we take a techie turn, or at least we expand our own consciousness by talking about the expanding consciousness of others. And I think we are learning now more and more how little we know about the intelligence of animals. At least our eyes are being opened. We've been introduced to some amazing stories recently, uh, certainly uh, coming to uh, an octopus when we think about my octopus teacher. But Grant is going to take us through some amazing stories, some findings, insights that he's arrived at around animal intelligence. Mm, and how little we understand. About yeah, them, exactly. Biology was my favorite subject at high really? school. Yeah, 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 I loved okay. it. Natural okay. sciences now is what they call it. Yeah, um, uh, I believe that you did watch my octopus, my octopus teacher. teacher. I did, yeah. um, yeah. and it was phenomenal. It's also, it's not new to a lot of people that understand octopuses. Octopuses are like... Octopi. Is it octopi? Is it octopi? octopi okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> oh, the biology was my favorite subject at <laughs> high <laughs> school. English wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> More land-based. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we understand how intelligent they actually are, yeah. like for, for quite some time now, I remember going to the Washington DC Zoo yeah. and seeing the octopus exhibit they had there. And the octopus had to be uh, trained or, or at least entertained the entire time because yes. oct octopus uh, in, in, in captivity can die of boredom yeah. because they have they to be the stimulated all the yeah. time. Wow. And they're always problem solving. You'll see, I mean, it's an incredible movie, oh, yeah. My Octopus Teacher, and you have to watch it on Netflix. But you'll see uh, uh, the octopus that he's referring to, like playing in the wild, just l like having fun yeah, you know yeah, we don't yeah. think of animals having the concept of in, like having fun yeah you know yeah. or feeling sadness or feeling joy or feeling um depressed but animals do feel those things and they don't they don't necessarily take the same way we do but they feel them as realistically or as real as we feel them yeah. they feel it as well i mean right now we see footage right now there's an octopus playing with some kind of ball so yeah so that's a good example so this ball will might have food in it and the, and the octopus needs to work out how to get to the food mm -hmm. and it becomes it can't you can't just feed an octopus like it's just it's you you, you have like a puzzle for it to solve to get to the food they can octop an octopus can open up a jar mm -hmm. as well which is really cool so i mean what other animal can just like open up a jar to get in to get what's inside yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah which and you is see some of the incredible cool. footage as well as well of, of how they learn so quickly and adapt in the wild in order to keep themselves safe in order to build a home for themselves oh yeah stuff. there's there a ton amazing. there's a ton of predators and they live for you know brief lives uh, lifespans in yeah, like yeah. relationship to us yeah. and they've got to learn really fast like what's food what's not food what's going to attack me yeah, and then yeah. develop techniques to counter it and, and and over and above that they're not taught these things these are no, all yeah, instincts very and learnings that they yeah. have to take on themselves yeah and they have to like work out puzzle solving so in the, wow. in the film like like you know the the octopus will pick up shells to like cover itself to make it look like it's not but it's not being taught that yeah it's it's literally working out hey wait this this might actually work this, yeah you yeah, know yeah. Uh, it's a genuine uh, problem solving ability let's talk about another mammalian um that has a brain that has um, often been described as being quite similar to our, ours or however they don't sleep they just swap from one hemisphere of the brain to another um dolphins we know about their insane intelligence um their eq as well yes talk us eq is Killawell. I'm glad you brought up EQ because we're starting to learn things about whales. Uh, there was a great film called Blackfish. It's really worth watching. It's about orca whales that we never knew before. Uh, one of the things that we're finding out is that they have a really big emotional cortex in their brains. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to think that potentially whales that beach themselves uh, vol voluntarily are doing so out of mourning for another whale oh, that's passed. Word. And if uh, in Blackfish, you'll see it quite clearly when oh. a calf is removed from the pod, the pod will then cry out to find out where that calf is and follow the boat that took the calf. They're literally crying out to find it. Um, in the footage that, that, we, that we have now, you'll see that they, uh, this one mother in the wild found a, a, a well, his calf, her calf died, yeah. which is not yeah. uncommon, um, but she literally tries to keep the calf uh, a, a, like afloat. Yes. De going down to the depths, picking up Bring her calf up. and keeping it up, just oh, mourning man. the loss of her calf. And that's because of this emotional cortex that we're trying to understand. Yeah. And it just goes to show that we have a perception of intelligence oh, yeah. that is like, I don't Human know, based. Yeah, like a beautiful mind type thing. And yeah. then we think that that is what intelligence is. But intelligence is a huge spectrum of things that spectrum animals can feel and word, experience yeah. existence the way we do in very different ways. Wow. And just because we can't relate to that doesn't mean we can't be compassionate and understanding to other animals and how they experience the world. Yeah. Pigs. Yeah, of 
course. So Elon Musk very recently implanted a chip into a pig's brain. Yes, some kind of and I had a, I had a massive problem with it, yeah. with, with, with that part of the whole experiment. Pigs are incredibly intelligent. Mm -hmm. And there, there's, a, there's a, a study that's been done recently about the level of intelligence from, that a pig has. And pigs and Alsatians have about the same uh, like problem solving and intelligence as a two-year-old child. Wow. So um, wow. in fact, a pig can, a, a young pig can work out what a mirror is faster than a human child. Their problem solving is a lot quicker when it comes to that kind of thing. And there's a study here, this is the mirror where the pig works out that the mirror is actually a mirror and that the food is on the other side. Some, this will take a pig about six hours to work out. It takes a child of the same age uh, a couple of weeks to, to solve that wow. particular problem. And we're just, we're just starting to understand how wildly intelligent animals are and how much we take them for granted. Um, yeah, we yeah. should we should really start looking after our animals and treat them the way we would cheat uh, our two-year-old children. Yeah, thank you. I think well said. I think the overall on, no. kind of learning here is to have compassion um, for our, our animal counterparts out there. Some very interesting and surprising. Suddenly rethinking a lot yeah, of choices. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So don't underestimate nature and of course its inhabitants and just uh, um, you know that's the gist of the day. And of course, thanks to you, Grant, for always diving into the icy great African seas and into <laughs> all kinds of uh, kind of worlds that we wouldn't necessarily do so on the regular to bring us all of this news. And of course, uh, do check out my octopus teacher. It's quite a touching film and one which I think will certainly result in some kind of consciousness being yeah, activated in your paradigm York. shift. Mm. Thanks for staying with your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on SAVC3 with all the feel good content coming your way. Uh, but we know this, there is so much beauty in the world and more especially the underwater kelp forest at the tip of Africa. And that's what we can learn from the breathtaking My Octopus Teacher uh, feature documentary that's just been released to critical acclaim. It is so fantastic. It follows the story of Craig Foster who in 2010 was debilitated by adrenal fatigue and decided to free dive in the freezing waters every day to revitalize himself. What a story. Yeah, now during this practice, he started to film his experiences underwater, and in time, a curious octopus captured his attention. They developed an unlikely bond, and Craig was able to capture the octopus's entire life on camera. There's so much more to the story, and the director of this proudly South African production, Pippa Ehrlich, joins us this morning to tell us more about it. Pippa, a very good morning to you. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me on the show. So how did the idea come about to turn Craig's experience underwater into a documentary? And of course, what have you personally gotten out of this entire filming experience? Uh, well, the idea to turn it into a documentary kind of, I think it was something where Craig had, had not made a film for almost eight years because he was burnt out after working very hard for a long time. And then he fell in love with this incredible ecosystem. And for a while, he realized that like, he kind of got his filmmaker's passion back. Um, but he didn't know what, what story he wanted to tell. And at the same time, he'd been having this incredible experience with this octopus who he followed for a year. And we kind of, we, he was looking at all sorts of stories, but then at some point, a light just went on in his head and he realized that what he had with this octopus was so, so special. And by miracle, even though he didn't realize he was going to make a film at the time, he'd managed to capture so much of what they had gone through together. And what's um, your takeaway from this entire experience, um, the filming of this documentary? Uh, this has been the most enormous privilege for me. Uh, firstly, to have the opportunity to work with a story like this as a storyteller, but what's been more transformational and profound for me is the fact that in the making of the story, I've spent almost every day of the last four years outside in nature and underwater in the kelp forest. And mm. to spend that much time in the natural world, connecting to the natural world, has an incredible effect on you. And it's taught me more than I ever thought that I would learn from mm. making a film. This is absolutely fantastic, Pippa. I know that you also hope that the documentary will contribute to the global campaign to protect 30% of our oceans by 30 by 30. Can you tell us more about the message that you're hoping to get across through this, this film? What's very, very important at the moment is to understand that the ocean, in fact, the natural world, is our life support system as human beings. We cannot survive as a species unless we start to look after 
the natural world that, that keeps us going. And biodiversity, which is the kind of community of animals and plants that we share the world with, is really the immune system of our planet. And we need to look after the, the healthy places in our oceans that contain that biodiversity. And that's the idea behind 30 by 30, which is to protect 30% of the wild parts of our ocean that we have left. Mm. Um, and ensure that those act like kind of savings accounts for future generations of human beings. And it's so important to have these conversations because protecting our oceans or nature in general is not just a one-sided thing. It mm. involves every single one of us to do our bit in our personal capacities. Yeah. But Pippa, back to the documentary, diving in the freezing kelp forests and recording <laughs> an animal's full life is not easy, I can imagine. What are some of the challenges you, know, you were met with while you were uh, in this process? So the first challenge that I had to deal with personally uh, is the fact that this is truly experiential filmmaking and Craig mm. wanted to make the film without scuba gear and without wetsuits. The first thing I had to do if I wanted to be involved was actually adapt my body to be able to dive in the Atlantic, which can be, you know, 8, 10 degrees at times, Ooh, wow. without wearing a wetsuit. And that process took more than six months. Well, this is incredible and it's such a groundbreaking process that you've gone through here. But we know that the film's done so well already, going uh, and receiving eight nominations for the Renard Jackson Wild Media Award. More than any other film, yes, a round of applause between myself, Kuthi, and the cameraman. Uh, but we know that you also won Best Feature at uh, FX. You're just really ticking off all those lists. How does it feel to have this level of recognition and the positive response that the film has gotten? It feels amazing. Yeah. Um, it also feels completely overwhelming especially this is my first feature film um i could never have hoped to have received this kind of response from festivals like wild screen and jackson wild and earthx uh obviously it feels really really good that other professionals are recognizing the value of what we've created but i think what's more powerful for me is hearing the emotional response that people have to the story and hearing people say things like you know, we, we need to really think about why we think that we're above nature as human beings and start reassessing our relationship with the natural world and our value systems when it comes to nature. Oh, I love it. I beautiful. absolutely love it. Well done. Congratulations, Pippa. Truly. This is beautiful to you and your entire team who've put in so much work, so much hours, so much time, but really at the core of it, so much passion to bring in this to life in such a beautiful way. Thank you. Thank you. And it was a huge team that made this film and, and really amazing post-production team in Cape Town called The Refinery, mm. amazing composer called Kevin Smuts, um, an amazing international team as well. And also amazing that Craig could share his story with such vulnerability and authenticity. So thank you Salute. everyone who was involved as well. That was the director of the Proud East South African production, um, my octopus teacher, Pippa Ehrlich. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Now, for some truly remarkable underwater encounters, just do yourself a favor and watch this film. It's one for the book readers and the book eaters. One for the construction workers and their helpful ones. One for the laundry sorters and the laundry hoarders. Whoever the dog member of your family, big or small, new NextGuard Spectra, the broad spectrum monthly chew that protects inside and out in one easy step. NextGuard Spectra, just one chew, so easy for you.
have your story of hope published by Cadbury Dairy Milk. Now, there's a story in everyone, so whether real or imagined, share yours and it could be amongst the 20 most inspiring stories compiled into an e-book that brings hope, light and wonder to orphaned and vulnerable children across the land. Add 87 240 to your WhatsApp contacts, follow the prompts and share your story as a Word document, a PDF or a video recording. Standard data rates apply. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on SABC3. Happy Thursday to you and thanks for joining us. And guess what? Today's the day. We have selected our first lucky viewer who's going to be spinning the Buy Smart virtual wheel of prizes this morning to stand a chance to win either a queen-size bed, there's a fridge, a washing machine or a smartphone. Very exciting times. Truly exciting times. Now, I'm pretty sure you wish this was you, right? Well, this doesn't have to be a wish anymore and possibly could be your reality next week, Thursday, if you you sign up to buy smart today. Signing up for buy smart is very simple. It all happens on WhatsApp when you send hi to 072. 897-6278 or by scanning the QR code you can earn points for qualifying purchases on products such as uh, Albany, All Gold, Jungle Oats, Tastic and so much more. Yeah, all the products that, that you'd be buying anyway that you need at home exactly. every day, right? But now it's time for us to get down to the business of winning and we have Charlotte Matamela on the line and uh, we are ready for her to spin the Buy Smart virtual wheel of prizes. Charlotte, good morning. How are you? I'm calling yourself. Very well. Where are you calling us from? I'm calling you from Musina. From Musina. Lovely stuff. Are you yeah. ready? <laughs> well, I hope that you're ready. I think, <laughs> I, I think Shannon she is, is ready. ready. So let's see what incredible prizes you'll be taking uh, or you have uh, won this morning. Now, remember, Charlotte, uh, when you want the wheel to stop and reveal the prize that you have won, all you have to say is stop, okay? So we're going to start spinning the wheel, and when you want it to stop, you say stop. You get it? You good with that? Okay. Yes, yes. Fantastic. So here we go. Let's get spinning. And the wheel is spinning and spinning and spinning. Stop. And stop. stop. Yay. Congratulations, Charlotte. You are winning yourself a beautiful fridge. It's all what? yours. Silent, silent. Uh, who's there with you? <laughs> oh, it's my grandmother. No. Oh, hello, Coco. <laughs> Coco must come and tell her she must come and say hello. <laughs> gotta come and say hello. 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 Oh, Coco. oh my word. So Charlotte has just won has just won a fridge for you and your oh, family thank there. You. How do you feel? <laughs> Reaction ever. Wow. I love it. Shyla, tell me, how do you feel right now? Hello. How do you feel right now after having won oh, this I'm prize? I'm excited. So, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, man. Oh, we're really, really happy for you. Wow. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, these are the kind of moments we live for. Listen, enjoy that fridge. May it bring many, many mm. days and months and years of, of happiness and usefulness and joy to your family. And thank you very much for entering the competition. Uh, have a wonderful day. Do you want to say hello to anybody? Yes. Go, go, go. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Thank you very much for winning the competition. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I love your laugh. Oh, I love Witty, it so your laughter puts so much joy in my heart right now. Thank you very much and congratulations. Have a wonderful day. Ah, that's that awesome. was just that is truly great. heartwarming, beautiful, Shoo. full of joy. I absolutely love it. Shout outs to Charlotte for walking away with that awesome. I want to, I want to laugh like Charlotte. She needs uh -huh. to teach me how to laugh. 
How does she do that? She goes like, <laughs> I want to laugh like oh her every God. single time. Man. I love it, All right. man. Now, yeah, go ahead, please. Don't forget that this month, you could also stand a chance to win weekly prizes, just like Shyla did this morning when you sign up to Buy Smart. A queen size bed, a fridge, a washing machine, and a smartphone are up for grabs. T's and C's apply and can be found on expressoshow.com. Yeah, and as Kuta said earlier on, all you have to do is send hi to 072 <laughs> 897-6278 on WhatsApp. So just hi. Uh, and of course, follow the steps or open your camera and scan the QR code and get the link to sign up. Browse, buy smart promos and products. Upload a photo of your till slip when you buy Tiger Brands products. Earn points for your purchases. Your points can then unlock rewards ranging from airtime and uh, fast food vouchers, movie tickets and shopping vouchers. It's quick and easy and you can sign up and go. Here's the QR code once again. Sign up today and stand a chance of going into our weekly prize draw and who knows, it could be you spinning our virtual wheel um, of prizes next week Thursday and walking away with a big winner with Buy Smart. Thank you, Charlotte. <laughs> 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 Get rewarded for your shopping choices with Buy Smart. Send hi on WhatsApp to 072-897-6278 and follow the steps. You will stand a chance of winning incredible prizes weekly on Expresso. Well, we keep the feel good going. 10 past 8 on Facebook Expresso Morning Show, SABC3 with Grant. It's fortnight day. Yeah. Catch you there at 10 past 8 on Facebook. We're live. Cheers. See you Bye. tomorrow. <laughs> Clover has been part of our South African heritage for over 120 years and wishes you all a happy Heritage Month. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production. Intense. Go up, go, go. It's intense. That was so intense. I'm down. Another. Where's your health? Bottom. The boys are on the screen. Just tell them all to have the phone on landscape mode. Okay, guys, you guys are all on screen um, right now. We're not live yet, but put it on landscape mode. I'm going to die. Yo, what's up, guys? I got a charge. What's happening? I don't know. Right there. Come on. 